What you see here is uh, a review of the first virtual world that had been shown at Ars Electronica 25 years ago. My name is Roland Haring and I would like to take you on a journey today through the virtual worlds that have been created and developed here. This is a cave and a cave is a virtual reality infrastructure for one person standing in the middle with projections from uh, all sides. And this was initially used as a research infrastructure in the 90s and was the first public accessible um, cave that was shown here at the Ars Electronica Center. Because 1996 is also the year when the Ars Electronica Center was opened for the first time, but also the same year where the Ars Electronica Future Lab was founded. We use this anniversary as an opportunity to go and look in our archives to find some of this original hardware that was used to create the cave 25 years ago. And what you see here is uh, one of the workstations that were used uh, to render uh, computer graphics at this time. So this is a silicon graphics uh, workstation and you see it looks a bit different as computers nowadays. They're really like a lot of uh, input boards and special hardware in it and it was really also incredibly expensive. But still, if you compare it to today's computer hardware, even your mobile phone is more capable than any of these workstations would be today. We used uh, stereo classes like this to create the illusion of a three-dimensional image for the people standing inside of the cave. And the cave was really the state of the art of virtual reality infrastructure at this its time. And you had really a very immersive uh, impression when you stood inside uh, this space, but still it had certain limitations. One of them is for sure that only a very limited number of people, like one, two, three people, could experience the VR space at the same time. But also you could not really move much as the cave is only three by three meters in size which means you had a very good virtual perception, but probably a limited interaction in this space. And also the cave was a very unique virtual reality infrastructure. It had certain limitations and one of those for sure was to leave the physical space and to freely fly and dive into the virtual worlds. And this is something where the Ars Electronica Future Lab started to research on its own virtual reality infrastructures and came up with the idea of the Humphrey. And here you see that the person is hanging on a robotic arm from the ceiling and really flies and navigates by the movement of its arm through a VR space. And this was realized by wearing basically a data headset and um, allowed you to freely navigate in a 3D space. What I have here is the VR4, which is one of these uh, head-mounted displays that we used for installations like Humphrey 25 years ago. And as you see, I mean, it's a little damaged due to the age and the amount of use basically, but it still, it looks very similar than uh, head-mounted displays that you know probably from today. Um, but still, you cannot compare it because this head-mounted display probably has a resolution of 700 by 200 pixels per eye. So it was totally impossible to read any text or things like that. But still, it was the most immersive uh, form of how to experience virtual worlds. And for that, it is still a very useful device. But one shortcoming for sure is that whenever you put on a head-mounted display, you are completely detached from the physical world that you are in. And so it's a total single user interface. And this is for sure um, a problem for places like the Ars Electronica Center, where people come as groups and want to have a shared social experience when they visit the also immersive VR installations. This limitation again was the next step for our research to try to find ways how to make virtual worlds um, available or accessible for groups of people.
What is mixed reality? Well, actually, it is about relating the physical and the virtual world um, to each other. And uh, you do this simply by overlapping those. So you have actually physical uh, objects like this box, for example. But this box also has um, a meaning in the virtual world. So actually, uh, these boxes were um, the places where virtual characters lived. And um, when you opened the box, they can come out and um, basically explore the physical space. And to know basically which kind of character is in your box, you had different installations. Like, for example, this shelf here on the left. So when you put the box in the shelf, you saw which character lives in the box. And to take this even further, you also had the possibility with this 3D scanning installation to make clay models, physical clay models, put them in the 3D scanner and create virtual objects out of it. And um, this went then on and on in this installation. So for really for a group of uh, visitors, they could jointly um, create um, their own uh, world and play with the characters. Also, like in the character editor to the right side, for example, when you put the box in there, you saw the figure that lived in the box and you could change the appearance and the character. And basically, by doing that, all these parts were brought together on this uh, world editor that you see here. So this represented the actual playground, the stage of the world. And you can paint and place objects there. And then you brought all of those things that you created together to this table. And this table was the central element of the installation where all of the parts came together. So you could use this as the stage for your virtual world. And by placing these objects on the table, opening up the box, the characters jumped out and became part of this virtual world. So and now we are here inside of Gulliver's world. This is the place where the characters lived and where they started to interact with each other. There had been different stories the visitors could uh, explore and everybody could create a unique world uh, for its own. But actually, we are in a different place here. This is the Deep Space 8K, the centerpiece of the Ars Electronica, where you can experience virtual worlds today. Hi, my name is Johannes Lukstein and I'm one of the developers of this 25th year anniversary project. Um, so because we cannot show off all the features that the Deep Space has to offer, like uh, stereoscopic 3D images uh, inside of a video, we are trying something new today. So what you have seen today and what you see today is a very early version of our virtual production prototype. So Roland has already mentioned how we utilized old versions of the Unreal Engine to bring projects such as the Humphrey Flight Simulator to life. We are now using uh, the latest version of the Unreal Engine in combination with a state-of-the-art uh, tracking system to enable this virtual production pipeline. And what this does for us, it, it, it enables us to uh, track this camera movement very precisely and basically transform the perspective of the virtual world with the perspective of the camera. And so we can actually give you a sense of depth as somehow like if you would be here wearing these 3D stereoscopic glasses as usual. So I can show you here uh, very quickly how this tracking system works. You can see here uh, an overview of all the eight different uh, cameras that are hanging around the deep space. And the, these ones enable us to track the camera that you can actually see moving around here. Johannes, could you please load the scene from Pepper Red Island for us? Yes. So 
what we see here is uh, Paper Reds Island. And Paper Reds Island is another virtual world that was created here, especially for the deep space. In 2009, this was the first project which was shown here. And it is about the Paper, paper Red Island. And you see that there are a lot of characters living in this world. And they basically um, cre being created by this painter over here who is drawing new figures. And once he is finished drawing them, they became alive um, in this world. But what was for us always very important with these large virtual worlds is to also allow the visitors to interact with them. And one way how you could do this was with this special pen, which uh, had a camera integrated. And this camera basically recorded the drawing and digitized it. So this means that the people visiting the deep space, this uh, paper at island, they could use a pen and a paper and start drawing. So when I finished uh, drawing here, then this character became also part of the Pepper Reds Island world. <laughs> and there were many more story elements uh, for the people. So for example, the evil pirates came and they set the whole paper island on fire and the people in the deep space had to make some kind of a rain dance and this rain dance then basically rescued the whole island and many other things were happening in this uh, virtual world. So this was a very successful project and basically also the starting point for many projects that had been done here in the deep space. Since 2009, by far more than 1 million people have visited the deep space and we have meanwhile hundreds of different presentations that you can see in this space. But these presentations are not only playful worlds like the Pepper Reds Island that you just saw. There's a wide range of content. So starting from media art, definitely as one of the main foundations of Ars Electronica, but also a lot of scientific projects with um, all kinds of different visualizations. One topic of uh, high interest is the field of medical visualization. And uh, as one example, we are showing with very high success here the cinematic rendering which allows you to explore the human body as a three-dimensional virtual world that you can basically freely navigate and try to understand how the anatomy works. Another topic of high interest is cultural heritage, as this has enormously challenging data sets that can be visualized here in this space. And what you see here, for example, is the St. Stephen's Cathedral of Vienna, one of our recent projects where we used high definition 3D point cloud scans, uh, which created images of more than 30K resolution, so enormous, but which also allows the uh, people to interactively navigate through virtual worlds like that. We hope these short impressions gave you an idea about the virtual worlds and spaces Ars Electronica created within the last 25 years. Our goal was always to make new technologies and exciting content available to a broad audience as a social experience. We will continue this endeavor in future. If you want to learn more, please come and visit us at the Ars Electronica Center and explore these virtual worlds together with us. Hi, I'm Stefan, and uh, I will do the moderation of uh, episode two uh, with the title Poetic Systems. With some projects uh, from music visualization to projects in the context of media art and architect uh, architecture, we will try to uh, make this topic uh, legible and try to work out the red line uh, which is leading these projects.